That's right, folks. Grass yours. Put on your water wings and hold on tight. It's time to paddle the douche canoe with House and More. It is another beautiful day for the Canoe World Order. I am here. Mo is here. And our guest is here. Yes, folks. We have dredged the darkest recesses of the Internet to bring you only the finest color commentary. You may know him as the Internet Aristocrat. You may know him as Jim, 81 Jim. You may know him as Mr. Medicare. I personally have begun to think of him as the reason that nobody will be able to get a screen name in 10 years. Because he likes us, he lets us call him Jim. Hey, Jim, how you doing? I'm doing good, guys. How are you doing? It's another beautiful fucking day in paradise. <laughs> so we're going to switch up our normal format here. Instead of going through a bunch of really crappy news stories, we're going to talk to Jim for a while until he's sick of talking to us and files that restraining order he was threatening earlier. We're going to proceed to fillet this man for the next hour. Sounds good to me. Now that we're actually recording, uh, maybe you can an uh, settle a bet between me and Mo, Jim. Sure. What do you got? Mo says that you are agreed to come on our, our, our crummy podcast because you're a nice guy. I personally think that you're trying to save your soul from some eldritch abomination spawned from the depths of 4chan. Which is it? I'd probably go with a uh, fairly nice guy when he gets to know me. Uh, pretty open to people who make requests. So <laughs> I, I know that's not as uh, dark and brooding as perhaps an answer you would have wanted, but there you go. See, and this is why I'm always right, because I'm a winner. Now, uh, we've got some questions for you. Now, some of these are sort of in-jokes for your channel. Some of them are not. Is that all right? Yeah, ask away. It's, uh, it's your guys' show. Anything you want to ask, I'm more than happy to answer. Beautiful. First question, how old slash big is your dick? Uh, that is the one I'm not going to answer. So I've already broken that promise. <laughs> to, but you, you shouldn't trust me. What the hell were you thinking? <laughs> Right, right off the bat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Your fan base seems obsessed with your penis, and we're not sure why. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I think it's probably just one guy who's really fucking dedicated. Okay, okay. To, to appease this one guy, does your penis exist? Yes, it does. Okay, there. We've broken ground, people. Well, at least he doesn't have Schrodinger's dick. Like, it could be there. It could not. It exists in quantum state of erection. I, I know. Well, sometimes I do keep it in a box, but that's another fucking story. All right. Second question. Is that really your picture? Which, well, you're going to have which picture? The Mr. Medicare picture. The fat Hispanic. The fat Mexican? No, that's not me. That's that's <laughs> Haberman. That's that's not yeah, that's not me. That's uh, that's uh, the troll lord. The master of the 24-hour off. How would be his name? Next question. Are Asian girls perfect? Uh, they're pretty close, yeah. I, I do love Asian girls. Where did you bury Jade's body? And as a follow-up, can I borrow a shovel? It is in a cornfield and a nondescript location. So you can borrow a shovel, but good luck finding it. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else have we got? Ah, where is the new video, you proto-Canadian trans cuck? Uh, well, the the video I had, uh, or I should say I was working on, was the, uh, the MO on the mattress girl. And I, I got pretty far along into it in the editing. I was doing uh, the finishing. Or I was finishing up the audio, I guess. And my computer went to shit on me. I think it's a hard drive issue. I don't know. But I, I had to kind of start from scratch. And I've got to do the video editing on one computer, the one that's fucked up right now, and then the audio on another computer and run it back and forth. And it's just a pain in the ass. So it's probably going to be, I don't know, another three or four days of doing this tedious crap. And then I'll get my ass to Best Buy or order on Amazon or do something and get a, a new hard drive in this thing and get back to making videos once every month instead of once every three months. Hey, you've heard him, ladies and gentlemen. He's actually trying. This isn't gym time. Uh, I See, I, I, you'd think that, right? But already on the first question, I totally, I totally did the opposite of what I said I would. So can you trust this? I don't know. I've just accepted the fact that he's trolling us with his release schedule, so. <laughs> you think people would have picked up on that by now, but shit. You damn video cocktees. I've I've always been inconsistent with video releases. I'm I'm fucking lazy and then I I'm terrible with technology. So it, it should be no surprise that shit takes fucking forever. All right, final question I've got on the list here. Have you ever met noted anti Semitic comic author Ben Zyklon B. Garrison? 
uh, once in an airport uh, when I was transferring. I, I was on layover or whatever the hell it's called, and uh, I, I was in a bar. I ran into him, but it didn't end well because I'm not I'm not pure enough for him. When he found out I had a little bit of a little bit of Irish in me, uh, the last thing I remember was him just glaring at me, and then I woke up in the hospital getting stitches in my head with the Corona bottle broken over it. He was just saying there. I can smell the potato on you. Yeah, he's a very intimidating man. He's a don't don't believe what he writes in his book. He is going to purge the world. I I, I believe this a hundred percent. You know, I used to work in the travel industry. You were talking about layovers. I, I got some really interesting questions. Uh, one time, get this call. Yeah, me and my girlfriend's going on vacation. I was wondering if I could ask you a question. I knew then that this was going to be interesting. I said, go ahead. He goes. Do you need a passport to go to Hawaii? Well, lovely. Not, not since 1959 when Hawaii became a state. Okay, what about Mexico? N- no, you do need a passport to go to Mexico, as it is, in fact, another country. Oh, okay, thanks. And she hung up the phone. See, you should have told her no. You can just walk right across the fucking border. Well, yes, but I want to keep my job at that point. You should have told her to pack up some bags full of sugar, hide them up or wreck them, and then just run across the fucking border. <laughs> uh, don't forget to carry a couple of guns with you too because they love those guns in mexico yeah wait till cinco de mayo and just start shooting off uh, shells and you know popping a few off into the air they fucking love it down there the border patrol thinks that's great that's how they celebrate you know true story back when i was in the army a buddy of mine had to be sent home on emergency leave because his father-in-law was kidnapped by banditos well that's a hell of a story they found him wandering naked along a Mexican highway two weeks later. Now, is that a service he had to pay for when he was down there? <laughs> or how did that work out? It was the craziest situation I've ever heard of. Because I've heard of people going home for funerals because their wife's leaving, all kinds of stuff. I've never heard what happened. My father-in-law was kidnapped by banditos. Now, do you think he took the opposite approach of what most people do when they bullshit uh, a situation like that and come up with something believable? Do you think he just was like, fuck it, I'm going to give the most ridiculous explanation I can because they'll believe it then? There was a flying saucer that dropped him off at the lake. Uh, he was naked and had hoses up his ass, so I have to go home because he's trauma. <laughs> so no shit, there I was, balls deep in a monkey's ass. Then a yeah, cat walked by. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's it's fucking crazy. He was the basis of fire in the sky. You don't know that, but I've got to go tend to his wounds. And the house is just sitting there giggling like an idiot. Say something, man. Something. God so, damn it. So was that, uh, was that your collection of questions? That was actually the cl- collection of questions. Okay, we have a viewership of like 12 people and this one guy from Pakistan who watches all of our videos. Is he just confused? Does he does he, does he speak English or does he just tune in because he thinks it's something else or maybe he's teaching himself English? I don't he's know. He's saying really bizarre shit. But we give him a shout out once every couple of episodes because 45 episodes later, this dude has been just dedicated. We're thinking about starting a GoFundMe page to have him extracted. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna rescue him, are you? Pay one of those paramilitary companies. Be like, get this man. Uh, knowing us, we'd just spend it all on hookers and blow. Actually, I uh, was wondering, where do you come up with the ideas for your videos? Are you talking about like uh, Tumblrisms or Hogbox, that kind of stuff? We'll start with there, yeah. Uh, it, it's mostly the absurd shit or the surreal stuff online that uh, kind of draws in my attention. It, really anything, uh, Tumblrisms, Tumblr and specifically, is chock full of crazy fucking people. And it's hard not to look at that community and then, I, I, I think it's two things. One, it's crazy individuals but then the really interesting shit is when those crazy individuals influence an entire community so you'll have like one or two nutcases on tumblr but then they will spread shit and it will be picked up and it it will just snowball into something real when you look at um what happened with the uh, with the what is it rachel dazelle how do you pronounce her last name Ooh, the hell no delaz delazel deludo whatever um and her transracial yeah her transracial you know modern day blackface bullshit that kind of stuff that You'll see that on Tumblr. When I started the Tumblrisms videos, I said there there are some subjects that were made as jokes that the Tumblr community thought was real and actually ran with, and that trans ethnic shit is one of them. And now it's it's kind of expanded. So you'll see like you'll see these groups like adopt the craziest stuff, and that's really hard not to be interested in. Uh, Hugbox Chronicles is just more of kind of talking about people's reactions to something going on or community getting I guess flustered or upset, and, and that's interesting in itself. 
uh, stuff like Internet Insanity started out as just trying to profile people that were genuinely crazy on the Internet. But after doing the first episode of that, I, f- I felt a little uneasy because the guy that I was talking about was legitimately had mental problems. Uh, and that wouldn't be a big deal if you had a couple of viewers and they were watching it and found it interesting. But if you have too many people watching it, you're going to get a lot of them that are going to going to want to go fuck with him. So I had to kind of change that up and do something a little different with it. That's why I focused on people like Nick Bates or, you know, I, I was going to focus on uh, others like Peter Coffin, those kind of individuals who have like this really weird kind of backstory on the Internet um, that kind of borders on the completely insane or surreal or absurd. Uh, so that that's generally what draws my attention. It, it, the crazier it is, the more interesting it is, uh, the more I want to talk about it. And that's really all my videos are is just talking about something. So does this mean at some point we're going to hear a four-hour extravaganza about Chris Chan? Uh, no, actually, with Chris Chan, it's an interesting story. So this is a this is a long story. So Chris Chan was kind of followed by a couple of different boards, like you had CWC, and then uh, more recently, like the Cow Board and that kind of stuff. And they've chronicled or they followed along as he's gone through his you know sagas or his stages of uh, insanity. But uh, a long, long time ago, this would have been back on. Crap. This would have been 789 Chan or 888 Chan. Um, I wanted to do that was a while ago. A, yeah, I, I wanted to do a documentary about Chris Chan. Um, so I posted anonymously and I, I said, "This is the idea. This is what I want to do, but I don't want to step on people's toes who are interacting with him and fuck it up for you." Because at the time they were doing a lot of funny shit, and I, the reaction I got was, "Fuck off! You're just trying to do it." Like they they thought, "Why would you do this long video or this documentary on Chris Chan if you're not going to get something out of it?" They kept thinking that I was trying to. I guess, commercialize it or monetize it or something. And I I tried to explain that that's not what I want to do. I just want to make it because it's interesting. But they said no, and so that was the last I ever thought of doing it. And by this point, it's just everybody knows about him. There's nothing really to go over that. Everybody has heard so much about him or encountered it in some way, whether it's through EED or you watched a Vivithag's audiobook, you know, retelling of his fucking comics or, or whatever it is. But more people have encountered it at this point. So it's not really... It's not really interesting to kind of go over. Uh, and somebody actually already did a documentary on Chris Chan. I believe it was for a high school uh, film class. And it's actually really good, uh, the kid who put it together. so I, Yeah, I saw that one, actually. That is, I didn't know that was for a high school. I thought that was for some I, I, oh, I, I, class or something. Yeah, I could be wrong. I, I thought it was high school, but it might be college. But either way, it was a film course, and they did a really good job. So, they, yeah, there's really no reason to do it. So sorry if anybody... I guess wanted to see something like that. That was your video on gang stalking was the one that you uh bad for the guy because they went in her and fucked with him, right? Well, yeah, the thing with the gang stalking guy was uh so he's this pilot who had a really good life, he was doing well, and then uh I I don't know exactly what his mental disorder is, but you can guess at it kind of listening to him talk, but he started looking up gang stalking online and his life devolved into just misery. And uh, I felt bad for him because you know, it's kind of like Tumblr, you know, how Tumblr puts out these ridiculous ideas like they self-diagnose and they do all these other things or they'll actually tell people, oh, you're not you're not schizophrenic. You're not crazy. You have a headmate and that's totally normal. You know, they have all all this weird headcanon shit and they try to pass it off like it's normal and there's nothing wrong with it. Imagine a real crazy guy like the person in the first Internet Insanity meets people who are into like gang stalking and they're not all insane. They might believe in it, but they're not, you know, mentally crazy. And he just, he gets sucked into it and they kind of lead him through it to the point where he really believes it now and nothing will unfuck his head on that. And I I thought it was interesting seeing his reaction to being introduced to that kind of stuff and seeing what happens to a genuinely crazy person when they're fed really insane stuff on the internet that people should know better than to pretend to have. That bothered me, kind of what happened to him and especially with uh, the headmate shit on Tumblr, which is just stupid. You know, there are people like posting stuff like, Oh, your headmate's Jesus, and uh, you know he's telling you to kill people, but that doesn't mean you're crazy. That's totally normal. We all go through that. And I just picture you know those kind of people listening to that and then going on a shooting spree three years later because people told them it's totally normal. There's nothing to be scared of. Anytime people talk about headmates, what I immediately picture is a um, well, how should I put this? College age white girl from a middle class family, usually upper middle class. Yeah, it, it, the demographic of Tumblr is most definitely, and again, this is where a lot of this, these terms get bandied about, but it most definitely is suburbanite, uh, usually Caucasian. Uh, it's almost always middle class or upper middle class. 
and they're yeah, the late teens to early twenties, and heavily female. I, I think even the person who founded the site is a little surprised at what it ended up becoming because I know he's made statements saying "fuck." So <laughs> my website has become a bastion for psychotics. Essentially, yeah, because that wasn't what the original goal of the site was, but it it's kind of what it morphed into. Where'd you come up with the idea for hallowed halls? Uh, I've been wondering that for a while. Uh, well, I, you know, I talked before about, um, hey, hi, God, this is kind of a long backstory, I guess, but when I was doing Tumblrisms, I, I talked about Tumblr, obviously, and SJWs and the kind of the crazy terminology they use. And I said, well, there, you know, there's a source for it, or there's a place it originates, or that it's kind of put forward more into the um, mainstream. And Hollowed Halls is kind of the follow-up to that, because a lot of it does come from an academic setting. And that's kind of where the idea originates, is I want to show what, it, what it's like on a college campus nowadays. Talked a little bit before about, like, Sokol, the Science Wars, or people, uh, God, was it uh, Harvey Silverglade, the founder of Fire, kind Fire. of talks about it, too. Yeah, he talks about it, too, a little bit, about what happened, I, I guess, after the 60s with college campuses and the people that were in positions of power and kind of the crazy shit they put forward. And you, you kind of see this escalation go on for 50 or 60 years of it getting more and more and more in your face to the point where now if you go to college, what's going to happen to you? Uh, I mean, look at Emma Sokowitz. Look at, oh God, what was her name? Uh, one of the funnier ones. Well, not funny, but, well, yeah, I guess funny. Meg uh, Lanker Simmons, or Simons, was this uh, student. Uh, to give you an idea, she's a student at this college, and she says, I've been threatened. Somebody's threatening to kill me. And she produces a Facebook post on one of, like, the college's community Facebooks, right? And it says, you know, I'm going to teach Meg to be a good Republican bitch. Or, you know, this kind of stuff. Like, I'm going to fuck her and shoot her and all this crazy shit. And so the campus ends up holding diversity rallies and, you know, she's getting all this press in the local media and the police get involved. They're going to find out who's who's harassing poor Meg, you know, and there are pictures of her and her husband standing uh, together defiantly. And then in the end, it turns out the cops, I think, arrest her because it turns out she sent them. She sent the threats to herself. Like the modern academic setting is such that crazy shit like that, where people would be like, mm -hmm something's a little off here. Maybe we should investigate before we start throwing diversity rallies and, you know, having anti-rape signs all over campus. It's to the point where nobody fucking looks into this anymore. I mean, it's become this kind of witch hunt or scarlet letter mentality where you've got these very bizarre SJW ideologies and they're put forefront. And if you challenge them or if you're hunted down by them, you really have no recourse. And so that's what Hollowed Halls is. It's, it's talking about instances where you see this play out, like the people at Dalhousie University. What, what was that in the end? It was a bunch of dental students that made a couple of fucking jokes on a Facebook page. But apparently they can't go through their dental program because that's too – it's too risky. And then you compare it to real life, right? Uh, you take it out of the academic setting. And what do you have? You have somebody like um, the, the fucking dentist I talked about where he's basically torturing children for money. Uh, explain that to me. How can this guy who's torturing kids for money do it for 20 years? But kids who make a joke on Facebook, they can't even become dentists. So <laughs> it, the priority on college campuses has become fucking crazy. So that that's kind of where it came from. Is I just want to I want to highlight for people how bad it's become. It's because actually thinking about things and trying to solve problems and take care of bad situations takes effort, and effort is hard. I have to say something though. Your ableism video almost got me in trouble. How's that? I had just watched it, and I was in college, walking to my next class, and I heard behind me somebody say, ableist shit lord. They weren't talking to me, they were talking to somebody else. But I w as I was turning around, because I had to see who said this, I, I said, apparently entirely too loudly, goddamn Tumblr bullshit nonsense words, and it was a girl in a wheelchair. Well, it's still a Tumblr nonsense bullshit word. Uh, when you look at terms like ableism, right, or, or you look at uh, the whole the whole point of that, uh, I, again, uh, one of the things Tumblr does, and even in the college setting, kind of what Hollow Halls is going to pursue or kind of bring light to, is they will take a term that actually had a real applicable meaning, and then they will twist it until it's fucking crazy and way over-exaggerated and well beyond what it was supposed to be about. Like so oppression? Or, or like ableism, though. I mean, to, to, like, stick with that one. Well, what was that in the end? In the or in the very beginning, you've got a group of people who are disabled who bring up a point like, "Hey, shit, I'd love to be able to get in the front of a building." That that you know, that's kind of what they're talking about. Like, could you put a ramp in? 
okay, that doesn't seem so ridiculous to me. Yeah, but that's what perfectly is, reasonable. Right, but what does Tumblr do or what do these university SJWs do? They take it and they make it into this thing where everything is triggering and everything is offensive and it's well beyond just putting a ramp in. Now if you're if you jog past somebody in a wheelchair, you're ableist. You know, that kind of crazy mentality. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? It, it drives me nuts with the thin privilege people, too. I, I am a big guy. I know that being a big guy is unhealthy. I'm working on losing weight. I've lost 15 pounds in the last month. I cannot realistically look at myself and go, well, I'm healthy. No, I look in the mirror and said, hmm, I'm going to die when I'm 50. I should work on fixing this. Well, yeah, the the thin privilege and body, or body positivity and um, what is the other one? Fat shaming they bring up a lot. Is this whole note, really what it's starting to come down to, it's really bizarre. It's like, I guess, a convergence of three things. One, it's people want to feel special. Two, it's they lack any willpower, so they'll find any excuse that really works for them. So especially in the instance of like thin privilege and fat shaming and all of this kind of stuff, you get people who would be like, well, you should feel bad because you're in shape and I'm not. And this doesn't have any reflection on my motivation to get myself, I guess, into shape or to put myself in a, a better position. It's Obviously, so it's be a Right. Yeah. Yeah. So oppression, one, you know, the other one is I just lack willpower. And then it, it, it's just power tripping too, really, at the end of the day is they like to be able to make other people heal. They like to, that's, that's one of the things I've always noticed about SJWs. Um, and that's why I've always said never fucking apologize. That's what they want. They don't care what you're apologizing for and it will never be good enough. So even if you do give a sincerely heartfelt apology, it will never be good enough. They just want you to basically get on your knees and look up at them with a quivering lip and tell them how great they are and how right they are and how wrong you are. That's They get off on that. It's just this ego masturbation for them. And so, yeah, when you bring up all these different subjects like ableism or uh, thin privilege or, you know, any uh, microaggressions is a big new one. It's just, it's one of those three things will end up being the root cause of what's motivating them to to bring that crazy shit up. The fuck is a microaggression? Oh, that, this is this, no. This this is beautiful. So now, if they, somebody does something you don't like, and you can't necessarily just scream racist or sexist at somebody, you can say it's a microaggression. So uh, you could say, "Oh crap!" I, I'm trying to think. It, it, it's so absurd; it's hard to even think of really an example of it. Let me think. What was what's a classic microaggression they'll bring up? Uh, oh, okay, I'll give you one. If I said all women are fucking stupid and they should be in the house and they should be spitting out babies and nobody cares, right? They, you'd have a woman stand up and say that's obviously sexist. But if they can't stand up and say that's sexist, they'll pick something else and call it a microaggression. Maybe I said woman in a way that they didn't like. And they'll be like, well, you put an inflection on it in this specific way, so that's a microaggression. I have an issue with that. So it's like a mini trigger. That's another way to think of it, like a, a mini trigger. Like you didn't use the word I wanted you to use, or you said it in a way I didn't like you saying it. So while it's not uh, what I consider outright wrong, I'm going to call it a microaggression and cry a little bit about it. Oh, my God. I, I can't get this. Maybe it's because I, I was in the Army and that messed with my viewpoint. But when I was in Afghanistan, there was a guy, a white guy in my company, who had a KKK clan member, full uniform, tattooed on his leg. And he was told he couldn't have that anymore, so he dyed it green and told everybody it was a goblin. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. True story. But I'm sitting there in my cot one day, and we're waiting for our next mission to go down. And he's walking through the tent, and he's holding a rope. And I'm going, what the fuck? And he just walks by me. And this rope went to a noose around a black guy's neck. And the black guy looked at me with his hands tied behind his back and said, I didn't know not to touch the white women. <laughs> and the crazy part? That whole thing was the black guy's idea. Okay. You you deal with uh, I I think it's just you put forty people who are just incredible assholes together and they work out their problems in the face of adversity. I don't know if that's actually a thing anymore. Like we used to have a thing where you you could be a white guy walk up to a group of black dudes and go white power and all the black dudes would go white power because <laughs> it was just something stupid to joke about. I can't get that. None of this shit's important. Your race doesn't actually matter. Well, see, and, and that, I guess, also plays into kind of what SJWs are, what you're kind of seeing. It's people don't have a fucking sense of humor anymore. Like, just joking about something now, especially like if you look at the, uh, like if you look at rape, right? You're not allowed to joke about that in any way. Look what happened to Tosh when he went to do his fucking stand-up routine. And some chick said she was triggered in the audience because he dared to bring up rape. You know, you can't, you can't joke about that. They're so sheltered. They put themselves in this kind of, you know, 
safe space mentality where you can't joke about anything, you can't talk about anything, and everything is triggering. And you, you end up with insane people that go out into the world and make everybody fucking miserable. So, you know, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah, you're going to – you get a group of people together that don't have a stick up their ass. They're going to be joking about all sorts of fucked up shit. But that's the way it should be. It, it, you know, humor is a great way of fucking bridging differences. And if you let people crack some fucking jokes every once in a while, you'd be amazed at how well people get along. Tell you what. You want to hear a tasteless joke? Mm-hmm. I like my women like I like my coffee, ground up and in the freezer. Well, there you go. Now, see, if you yeah. said that on a college campus, you'd probably be expelled at this point. Don't give Mo ideas. He's in college. <laughs> I mean, what are you talking about? Lovely weather we're having. Not oh, o- only is he in college, but he has parking privilege. <laughs> hey, hey, there you Yeah, yeah, that'll probably be the thing, too. I mean, you joke about it now. I used to joke about the trans-ethnic uh, thing, because I never thought that was going to come down the pipeline, and look at us now. Oh, no, no, no. How? Tell him the story. Uh, Mo got to a parking spot before somebody else did, and the girl rolled down her window and told him to check his privilege. So apparently he's got parking privilege. Uh, Although, in my defense, I do have disabled veteran plates, so... Well, you know what, uh, shitlord? You should have obviously uh, fucking gotten out of the car and carried her to the spot, because she deserves that, because she's oh, special. I can't have... I can't actually touch a woman, because that's rape. I would have had to pull her car with a rope by my teeth. Well, that's that's partially acceptable, but to be ableist because you have teeth. What about people with dentures? What are you trying to shame them? Oh, uh, you're right. I should yeah. wrap it around my neck. It just save so much more time. But that's a microaggression. You might trigger somebody and make them think about uh, lynchings back in the 1950s. You gotta Speaking of which, that privilege. I got another joke for you. You ready? Sure. Uh, I like my women like I like my vegetables. Dug out of the ground. Nope. Gotta love uh, necrophiliac jokes. <laughs> Those always go over well, especially at parties. He's got a million and one really bad dad-like jokes like that. Don't don't encourage him. We will be here all night. But yeah, I, I feel bad for you if you're in college. University is just an uncomfortable place to be at this point, especially if you've got a professor that's into the shit. You, you're you going to have to toe the line or suffer the grade, and that really isn't how it should be. My God, I know. There's this 18-year-old little teeny bopper girl just out of high school. I asked her what time it was. She, I guess she thought I was hitting on her. She looked at me and goes, I'm 18. The bitch just looking at you makes me feel tired. <laughs> yeah, I, I I wanted to know the time today, not how old you are, yeah, how long you've uh, aged. That wasn't the time I was looking for. We uh we have a friend who was a, a Marine. In fact, I believe he was a recon Marine. Wait, and... are we talking about the friend who ripped a locker out and beat another man with it? Yes. Like, ripped it out of the wall? Yeah. Oh, I love stories about this guy. He got fired from his job and decided to use his GI Bill to go to college and get the degree for the job that he was actually doing. And when he got there, he was in with a bunch of kids straight out of out of high school. They were complaining the fact that they could not use calculators in their math classes because in, in elementary and high school, they had been allowed to use calculators. So now they're not prepared to use their brains to do actual math. Right. Well, you know, there was a movement, uh, I think it was in California, um, for a while, actually, over the past, I'd say, four or five years, to basically change the way mathematics was taught at an elementary level and to basically teach kids how to use a calculator rather than teaching them how to do math itself. Because, uh, yeah, to basically completely alter how mathematics is taught to make it a tool-based learning style and to completely strip away learning uh, arithmetic, learning your times tables, learning long division, learning how to do any of the really basic shit that will help you when you get to the more advanced shit. You know, it's it's like chess, uh, math, science, that kind of stuff. If you don't know the basic moves, you're never going to come up with a, a decent strategy to win the fucking game. But their idea was, well, fuck it. Let's just wipe the pieces off the board and declare yourself, uh, you know, a victor. Here, Here's a calculator. You don't need to know shit. Um, I think those people should check their fucking techno privilege. Yeah, that, well, it makes you wonder what they're going to do if the technology fails, because then you're going to have a bunch of fucking stupid people that really don't know how to count. And some people don't have fingers. How are they expected to use the calculator? That's all I'm saying. I, they're going to have to learn to control that tongue. I, I'm just glad that I graduated from high school when I did, because I had to learn how to use a slide rule. Oh, yeah. You'd be amazed what kind of shit they're trying to push uh, on the lower levels. Uh, so I, I can't imagine what co- – even now I can't really imagine what uh, a college classroom would be like, let alone in 10 to 15 years when you're going to have just the most obnoxious kids that don't know how to do fucking anything. 
It, it's just going to be yelling at each other, talking about triggers and privilege, and it's going to be a shit fest. Oh, no. We, we've had this article about eight episodes ago where it was a school in, was it Sacramento? Are you talking about the trigger warning on the syllabus up at University of Santa Barbara? No, the one where a cultural anthropology class count as a history class. How did that, how how did they swing that? I don't know. It pissed off all the history professors, but these people got a cultural anthropology class, a class that's talking about race relations and the history of things like the Muslim Brotherhood. This class is a history class that does not teach history. Yeah, they do not talk about World War I. Or World War II, or the Cold War, or the Cuban Missile Crisis. Well, just wait till they get around to renaming shit. You, know, you say World War One, World War Two, they'll probably change it to something. You know, the White Privilege War, or some crazy shit like that. That that's the next step. Right now, it's getting trigger warnings and stripping out subjects in the syllabus so kids don't get triggered. Next, it'll be whatever's left in the syllabus and whatever is left being discussed needs to be renamed to make it more reflective of today's values which means just ask JW buzzwords up the ass. Yeah, when I found out that they were trying to put a trigger warning on a uh, Harvard Law class because they were afraid that it might offend people who were the victims of sexual assault, I kind of facepalmed because the name of the class was like Rape Law 101. Yeah, so if you're not talking about rape, it's going to be a real fucking hard class to learn anything in. See, my problem, the thing I have to control on a daily basis is I I have an issue with authority figures that manifest itself in a desire to do the exact opposite of what an authority figure tells me to do. For example, I joined the Army because my mother told me I would never make it in the Army. Well, wait, how did you survive in the Army if you don't do well with authority figures? Because I learned quickly. Second day of basic training, drill sergeant told me to do something. I said, you got it, Skippy. That that, that must have went over well. You got no ship. I went over like a fart in church, okay? Just not well. <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine. Uh, the last thing you want to do in basic is piss off the drill instructor. <laughs> like, I, I mouth off, but I have the capacity for basic learning. <laughs> and three hours of doing something called a front-back go, that'll learn you. Whenever I, I hear all this, well, teach men not to rape. Teach men not to rape. Oh, it's trigger warning. The the back of my head starts clicking going, I, I should become just the worst person now. That's it. Everyone's getting raped. Coming in there like, Oprah, you're getting raped and you're getting raped. Well, I, I always found it funny, the whole logic behind, don't teach women how to protect themselves. Instead, teach men not to rape. Like, well, one, like they need to be taught that if, as if society hasn't drilled that into your head that that's a bad thing. Oh, yeah. The legal system hasn't established that that's going to get you in trouble. But I, I always like there was an image macro referring to that where it shows a bunch of kids and it shows a really busy road. And the kids are like, don't tell us to look both ways before crossing the street. Tell cars not to hit us. And, and it's a good parallel because how fucking crazy it was when you think about that. Because that's the kind of that's a kind of shit. It's basic safety stuff. You don't want to put yourself in a situation where you're going to be in danger. That That's not sexism. That's just, hey – might want to look out for yourself. There are crazy assholes out there that'll do really terrible shit to you. Welcome to the world. There, there are bad people in it, no matter uh, <laughs> how much you tell them. Don't tell people how to drive. Tell cars not to crash. Yeah, that's that. Really, at the end of the day, when you break it down, is what they're saying. It's, it's just, it's nonsense. It's, it's fucking absurd. And these are the people that are going to be running the country in twenty years. I, I don't. I they'll be running it into the ground. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to be around when it goes down. I, I just I want to be in another country where things are stable and I don't have to watch the implosion happen in real time. Hey, I am stocked up on beans, two ply toilet paper, and bullets. I'm good to go. I just eat a lot of bacon and cheese. I'm not going to be here in 20 years. Well, you'll be able to avoid the insanity then. Uh, it might not be a bad plan, to be honest. Actually, my original plan for watching the world and it involved a lawn chair in my front yard and some 20 year old scotch. But now I might get arrested for not wearing a shirt in my yard. Or pants. Hey, it's my property. I don't have to wear pants. Yeah, kids got to learn it eventually, so yeah, let the bus come on by. I'll teach them a lesson of biology. Hey, if I walk around without pants long enough, the Neighborhood Association will buy me pants. It's a brilliant strategy, really. Please do not walk around naked on your front lawn. Here is a check signed all of us. When you're doing your videos, have you ever run across anything you said, you know, that's a little too over the line, I, I really don't want to talk about that? 
no, not really. I, you know, I never gave into the whole idea of, I guess, self-censorship. I, I'm usually looking for something that's either absurd or funny. And yeah, there, there's nothing that I've really come across where I thought I can't put that in. It's, it's not my personality. I had one Hugbox Chronicles where it was uh, 4chan had fucked with Tumblr by going and posting a bunch of shit and somebody had, had said in response, what the hell was it? Uh, oh, my friend killed themselves last night because of this. And of course I put that in because it's funny because it's so fucking absurd. You know, it's not true. There, there's nothing I won't talk about. It, that's not, I guess, how I am. There's not a, a subject I think is too taboo to talk about. Um, well, when they said friend, they meant Jack Sparrow headmate. Yeah, it, it more than likely was something like it. Uh, they always make shit up for attention. So 99% of the time when I'm, especially with Tumblrisms or Hugbox, I, I, there's, there's almost nothing I believe when I'm reading through their fantastic bullshit. There was one with the other kin one where they, they, what did they call themselves? A deer kin? Where they're basically strapping antlers to their fucking head. Uh, it, it just, it, the craziest shit. They live in their own little fictional world. But yeah, I've done videos by this point about pretty much fucking everything. I can't really think of anything that I haven't covered or wouldn't cover. So you're saying now that you belong to the cult of Carlin. Cool. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, I never, I never gave in to the notion of, oh, you can't say that. That's not allowed. Fuck that. Um, I look at the internet as kind of a fading thing. Uh, you had Web 2.0 come in and kind of commercialize a lot of stuff that really wasn't making people money or wasn't money-oriented. Uh, I, I see Web 3.0 kind of as a continuation of that, where I guess that's the craziest or that's the craziest thing to me. When you look at stuff like Snowden, when you look at all these leaks about talking about kind of government surveillance and wiretapping and how uh, you know they're doing all this stuff to monitor you then the government's doing all this stuff to potentially censor what you can say you'd think that's what was going to lead to it that's going to be the you know the future 1984 but the sad reality is it, that's not what it's going to be it's going to be web 3.0 it's people censoring themselves and each other they cr they're creating terms of services that restrict what you can say and how you can express yourself on sites that never had them before I, I, it's bizarre to me to see the internet as like this dying or fading thing where people are willingly giving up their ability to say what they want to say because they somehow think that will make it better and not turn it to complete utter shit. So, you know, enjoy, enjoy the time while you can because the Wild West is coming to an end. The law is coming and they're going to bring civilization with them. And that's going to include 48 fucking Starbucks and a whole shit ton of SJWs. We should have some sad music right here. Uh, well, it is sad. I mean, look at uh, Twitter. You have the Twitter CEO, the new guy that stepped in, basically say, we're going to delete 10 million accounts because we think they're, uh, they're posting things that they shouldn't be posting. And we're going to put into place a new harassment policy. And we're going to put into place a new way of ba or basically dealing with people to make all these hurdles you have to jump through to attach your identity to an account to be able to continue tweeting. Well, what was the appeal of Twitter? It was being able to sign up for a fucking account and then say whatever the fuck you wanted to in 140 characters. But now it's become this this kind of lockbox mentality on the site, or it's shifting towards that. And this is while they're losing money hand over fist. So I don't know what the fuck they're thinking. Uh, Facebook has gone way overboard. You you can look at the shit they do. I mean, can you even delete a fucking Facebook account at this point? You know, it, it follows you everywhere. There's not really anything you can do to get rid of the fucking thing. I managed to delete a Facebook account... It seriously, real life took me two weeks, and I'm pretty sure I had to sacrifice a chicken at one point. Well, it reminds me of those people who would talk about trying to discontinue a service like um, AOL, right, or uh, Time Warner Cable. You know, those like horror stories where they call into the uh, person, they say, "Yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to end my uh, service with you. I'm, I'm moving or whatever," and then they'd be dicked around for five to six hours and told they can't do that, or do they want another offer? Do they want this? Or they'd read back their their uh, internet history to try to shame them into staying, that kind of crazy shit. That's kind of what Facebook feels like. Like, you can't leave us. We're not going to fucking let you. But yeah, all these sites, uh, YouTube, am I, can you really put up anything you want anymore on YouTube? Fuck no. They have so many commercials out the ass, so you've got corporate on you for DMCAs, and then you've got uh, all these people that are, oh, this is triggering, and this is harassing, and you need to pull it down. It takes away the allure of what those sites were, you know, as platforms to interact with other people. Good luck going remember. on to a fucking, yeah, a forum? My God, dude, what forum exists now where you can fucking talk to people? It's either uh, you've got power tripping mods or a community that's so fucking insulated from the real world that, God, if you don't say something, they, you know, if you say something they don't want to hear, you're, you're fucked, you're gone, you're done. You look at, um, uh, God, look at the site like something awful that was, that was, you know, built on the idea of offending people. 
and look at kind of what it's become now, where you've got everybody, you can't say that, that's offensive. You'll hear SJW terms thrown around on all sorts of different fucking areas of something awful. So it's people censoring themselves. I don't understand it. I don't know why that's happening. Um, I think a large part of it, and this goes back to Hall at Halls, is it's originating in academia and it's bleeding into the real fucking world. You got kids going through college, they learn all this crazy shit, and then they're out in the real world interacting with people and they're online interacting with people, and they start to bring that mentality with them. And it's just sad. It's, it's the Alamo boys. Uh, we are at the fucking Alamo. So enjoy your last stand because I give it another four to five years before it's so shitted up that it's just not, it's not the internet we know. Or new you know, this, anymore. this college ultra PC insanity was predicted by a movie. Which movie was that? 1994's PCU. Starring <laughs> a bunch of actors I can't remember anymore. I've never, I've never seen that movie, but I, I'd love to. I'll tell you that much. Mm, college it's, campus with hurt feelings, safe spaces, mobs chasing the, sh- the only white guy on the cast. Okay, one of like five white guys. Oh, yeah, no, I definitely have to check that out. Wasn't there a, a character in that movie that, that did his Ph.D. thesis on television? So he watched like six months of TV, did nothing else but watch six months of TV. And then at the end of the movie, he stood up and says, I'm free. Yeah, he this goes, was, I, I need a shower and walks off. This was uh, 94, you said? Yeah, PCU. What the hell's his name? Oh, God, fast talking. Big nose. Jeremy Piven. He's in that movie. Yeah, I'll definitely check it out. It, that sounds like the reality, though, we're kind of dealing with. But it just makes me sad because I've, I've been online. I've, I've used the Internet and all its different uh, incarnations, I guess, over the years for a long fucking time. And to just see people destroy what it was or what it is, it, it's just sad, I guess. I don't think they realize what they're giving up and that once they give it up, there's no getting it back. So when these people are so into... Oh yeah, you know, uh, we need every site to have a unified uh, toss to basically make it impossible to upset somebody else. It, it, it's just no, they've depressing. stopped worrying about giving up personal freedom. They're willing to give up as much personal freedom as they want for the not even real safety, the illusion of where nobody gets hurt and the it's that echo chamber bullshit. People can have different opinions. It's not a bad thing. That's in fact how you grow as a person. Well, yeah, that was the original point of a university. You'd go there and you would challenge your ideas. You'd challenge other people's ideas. You'd, through debate and discourse and argument, you know, refine what you believe in or adopt new stances. And that got stripped away. And you're kind of seeing that on the internet now, where it's the mob mentality of this is right and this is wrong. And if you disagree, you're fucked. Um, Aunt Jemima and Uncle Ben stand in the corner of the room holding guns. No, don't shoot the children. <laughs> yeah, yeah, essentially. <laughs> but, uh, it, Sorry, like, I yeah. watched that video you today. See the video? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's fucking ridiculous on a lot of levels, too. You've got uh, a fucking college level debate association, and where's the debate? You know, I had somebody bring up after I put the video up, oh, well, the, there was a clip of an Asian kid talking super fast. And they're like, oh, well, that's, that's a technique they use because if they talk so fast and you can't address all their points, you win. But like, what the fuck? You know, <laughs> I just. Since when is being an idiot? <laughs> More winks and nods than a fucking room full of people at a methadone clinic. This is ridiculous. Well, yeah, it's basically who can be the micro machine spokesman. You know, those old commercials where he'd ramble on super fast, you can barely understand what the fuck he's saying. I guess that's how you win debates, using that technique. But yeah, see, it is a fucking joke. The people associated with it should feel fucking ashamed of themselves. Yeah, because I, I, thinking is a white thing, and the white thing is bad. Yeah, I, I, I that guy. God, I can't even remember his name off the top of my head anymore. But the the head of CETA, you know, the head of the all the university staffs. Oh, the guy with the penis for a head. Yeah, he he blocked comments on his discussion page and fucked with access to the video for a while. So uh, even he is like he's the head of a debate association, and he won't let you tell you or he won't let you tell him your opinion. Like he's he's segregated himself off. He's insulated himself. He's in a safe space. The head of a debate association is afraid to engage people in conversation. What a one pussy. Of the, one of the reasons I like being in Texas, one of the very few reasons, uh, I was at the extracurricular activity fair at my college, and there, it, there was the debate team. And I've always been interested in it because I like to think I can talk, not as eloquently or well-spoken as you, but I, I like to think that. 
So I go over to the to the guy running the debate team, and I'm talking to him for a while. I said, so are you guys like a part of CETA? And he goes, dear Lord, no. I was like, this is the group for me. Yeah, that that's the other thing, too. Um, kind of touching back on what you mentioned, or what you guys were asking earlier, you know, what draws me into doing a video, or I guess why do I do them? One, you know, it, it interests me, obviously, the absurd and the surreal, that kind of stuff. But I, I find the best course of action when you're encountering something, especially like the CETA thing, is nobody jokes about it. Again, they, these people are afraid of humor. So if you make fun of it and you talk about it and you mock it, it makes it easier for other people to do so. You've got all these people are, are kind of on the sidelines. They're bystanders. And they'd really love to say something because they think it's just as crazy as you think it is. But they're afraid to do so because they know the backlash. So I, I kind of like being able to throw a little bit of shit on these idiots and then make it easier for other people to do so. So it just loosens the mood and people can joke about it again. Because CETA is a joke. I hope I hope colleges and universities look at CETA and start to mock it and want to get rid of it because it's fucking dumb. I get away with a lot of shit on a college campus for being... I, I, you'd be amazed how easily I can play the bitter veteran card. <laughs> Anytime somebody goes, well, I've been to foreign countries, what have you done? I'm like, I, I don't even care that much about my army time. and It shuts people up so quickly. It's beautiful. Have you ever had uh, what is it called? Where you got somebody pretending to be who was in the service? Uh, is it stolen valor? Is that stolen the valor? valor. You, yes, uh, I met one of those people. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, God, where was this? I had just gotten out of the army. I was working as a janitor at an old folks' home because that's the perfect job to take when you get out of the army. Yeah, there you go. And this guy was coming to visit his relative. And he was wearing this uniform that was, he had all of his patches right, and he had all of his ribbons right, and he had the little infantry thing. The only problem was, all this stuff was army stuff on an Air Force uniform. He fucked up that one crucial detail, did he? Yeah, and I knew that. So I'm walking, excuse me, so what did you do in the Air Force? I'm not in the Air Force, I'm in the Army. Your pants beg to differ. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not one of these people who chase him down the street going, Stolen Valor! I just, you know, quietly pointed him out to the rest of the nursing staff and... Had a good chuckle? Yeah. I, yeah, I never got the mentality behind that. I don't know why these people... Well, it, uh, well, I guess I do. I mean, it's the play pretend mentality of, uh, you know, <laughs> I want to get something without doing something. So I'll just put it's, the uniform on and pretend. It's the Tumblr mentality leaking over into real life. They ha They want to be special without actually being special. Yeah, see that would that would piss me off if I had, if I'd served. I, I I can see why they get angry. I've seen a lot of those videos up on like uh, especially live leaks will have a really good one every once in a while where it's somebody going around pretending. Especially like a, a couple of them have been on college campuses. Yeah, yeah, they'll be walking around and then some guy will go up and start shit with them, and then they just shrink and they try to run away because they don't want to deal with it because they're pussies. Yeah, you can't get that here. We got a large veteran population. <laughs> That's one of the main reasons I enjoy going to college here is that. A lot of this, the SJW free, the really messed up SJW stuff doesn't happen on this college campus because not only are a lot of the students veterans, a lot of the teachers are veterans. Something like the average age for a class in my college is 24 or 25, not this 18, 19 year old bullshit. It, it makes me wonder if there's anything they won't pretend to be. Hey, when you really think about it, they'll pretend to be a different race, a different sex, a different gender. They'll pretend to have mental illnesses or handicaps. They'll pretend to be uh, a veteran or have to worked in some kind of area of the service. Like, what won't, I wonder what the line for SJWs and like Tumblrettes and the, this kind of person is. If there's something they just won't do, because I haven't seen it yet. They'll lie about being raped and about being molested and about suffering traumas. They'll say that they have uh, PTSD when, you know, they, they hear a word that triggers them. They'll, they'll, take anything they can get their hands on. Is there a line they won't cross? They'll base their entire senior year of college thesis on a falsified rape accusation they made to get attention. And then drag a mattress around for a year? Yeah. Okay, did she throw away that mattress, or did she sleep on it? No, she she used it at graduation. She had three of her friends help her down the aisle. Uh, uh -huh. God, that, that irritated the piss out of me. It should. I, you know, it, it It's shocking that a uh, foreign student can have that happen to them. You know, you come to America to study. You're you're looking forward to going to a really good university. You've gotten in. You you've done all the work. You're going to leave. You're going to have a degree. You can show your family and friends overseas and be like, look, and you know, I, drunk rapes you. 
Yeah, look, look what I did. Look, you know what what I've done, and what ends up happening to him. Not only does she make up all this bullshit, not only is it not corroborated. Does he have evidence showing that it's bullshit? The college basically ends up having a, a witch hunt to go after him, brands him with a scarlet letter, doesn't allow him really any recourse, and then on top of it, she makes her art project something that shames him or attempts to shame him and make it uncomfortable and to to persecute him for six to seven fucking months with the college's approval. And then she has the gall, after all this information comes out about how much bullshit this is, she has the fucking gall to walk down graduation uh, with this fucking mattress and go up and grab her degree. Yeah, I, it's what happened? just unreal. Fucking Clapistan. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just, it is fucking surreal, the, the, I guess, atmosphere at a university. If she can get away with that, if there's no, rec- if nothing ends up happening, if he doesn't win his lawsuits, if the college doesn't fucking buckle, and go bankrupt like it should for this kind of bullshit. If she doesn't get called to the mat for it in some kind of way, either civil or um, criminal, I, what the hell? What What do you think is going to happen? If she can pull off this kind of stunt and get away with it, you're everybody in college is fucked. Because oh, it's just... I, I've seen that new video she made. She was called to the mat. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Yeah, but uh, look at what they're already doing with it. I mean, she's she's being hailed as an artiste. Oh, how avant-garde is this? How new age is this? Oh, look at how she's dealing with her struggle and her trauma. Are you fucking kidding me? This huckster is getting away with this bullshit? It, it, it's just, it's surreal. It is, I'd be scared to send, if I had a son, I'd be scared to send him to fucking university or to a college. I, I would be terrified. Absolutely fucking terrified to send him. Well, luckily they have internet colleges now. Well, if internet colleges uh, have any common sense, you know, like Phoenix, what is it, Phoenix Online or Phoenix University Online, if they have any common sense, they will highlight the shit and use it as a selling point. They'll be like, hey, our courses may suck compared to uh, Princeton, but at least nobody's going to accuse you of raping them. I I have to say the worst part of her releasing that video was the title of it. What was the title of it? Are are you talking about the title of the website? Uh, the, The title of the video, which was French for This Is Not Rape. Oh, the, yeah, and then she had the fucking audacity in the um, description of it to say, uh, will you continue to watch it even though or even though uh, watching it, it constitutes rape? She basically made it seem like, if you watch this video I have intentionally made, you were raping me. Well, I mean, if she's insisting, well, who am I to say no to a woman? And then she got her mom to, like, help her pimp it out? That was That was creepy as hell. <laughs> yeah, it's just, what what has happened? I guess on the modern college campus, what the fuck is going on? The, their parents aren't taking the time sitting down with them and beating the shit out of them. Well, right, and it goes to a, you know it, it uh, to a certain degree, to a larger degree, I guess, is it Title IX, I believe, where colleges are basically having funding withheld or tax breaks withheld if they don't comply with this idea that they need to, on their own, outside of the criminal justice system, have tribunals that judge rape cases. And if there's a, you know, a preponderance or, you know, if it's 50.0001%, if you think it's just a tidge over halfway, then you have to expel them or you have to kick them out of the college or you have to do this. It's it's government sanctioned insanity. Uh, I, I don't know what the fuck is going on. And I, I don't know why she hasn't just been shamed in public for pulling this crap off, uh, especially with the amount of evidence. The, the amount of evidence showing she's full of shit is just unreal. Well, wasn't there a, another group that was going around and putting up posters of her with her mattress that said Pretty Little Liar on it? Yeah, Pretty Little Liar. Uh, look what, uh, you know, going back to talking about uh, self-censorship and the terms of service hug boxing that's going on on the internet. They had a Twitter account. It got banned in about a day. And I, I followed the Twitter account. I was reading through the tweets. They didn't say shit that would have uh, constituted something that they needed to be banned for. But again, it, it was too offensive to allow to continue. A your right stop where my feelings begin. Yeah, so it, it's just, it's sickening. I, I guess that too goes back to kind of motivation. Occasionally something will just piss me off and I want to do a video on it. Uh, Emma is definitely one of those. I'll be right back. My car alarm is going off. Have you heard anything about the uh, the Boston University professor, uh, Saida Grundy? Uh, no, I, I haven't heard of this. What is it? Oh, this is this is absolutely fabulous. This is this is a a, uh, a PhD candidate in African American studies and something else who on Twitter basically just came out and said that the white males should admit that they are the problem population on college campuses. And then 
uh, uh, in a Facebook exchange lashed out at a at a uh, white uh, rape survivor telling this girl to go cry because that's all she does and that's all she's good for. Well, she and, sounds charming. And Boston University is bending over backwards to support the professor and you know even even 10 years ago this woman would have lost her job for over this. Well, I, I don't know about that. I mean, look at the Duke lacrosse case. You had the um, letter of the 88 or the 88 letter or whatever it was where 88 of the people on the faculty wrote a letter condemning the lacrosse team and basically saying they're guilty and they, they should suffer the consequences. This is before the trial or any of the evidence really was brought to bear. None of them retracted that apology and none of them were fired for it. The special snowflake mentality is bleeding over into politics. Like uh, when those senators wrote that open letter to, a, what was it, Iran? Oh, yeah. You're, you're, again, it's going to be – well, that that's one of the things that is kind of scary is are there going to be politicians that think this is their constituency? Are there going to be politicians that think they can win an election by by proposing ridiculous laws and ridiculous ideas uh, into the mainstream to try to garner the SJW vote? That's a little bit fucking terrifying. I, I hope that blows up in their face. I was going to say, you want to talk about ridiculous – politicians i i'm sure we can name a few what we're up to 15 republican presidential candidates right now is a is a field uh, how's the field looking so far well donald trump ted cruz does it doesn't or, trump run every fucking time or he, he has tried to run every fucking time and it never works out for him i don't understand why he keeps trying well it's really hard to run for president when you're an idiot no that could be it yeah, he's so busy running casinos that are losing money. I didn't think that was possible, but apparently it is. Well, Trump found a way. <laughs> oh, is it Ted Cruz, the Canadian-born Cuban immigrant, or second-generation Cuban immigrant, who wants to deport all the immigrants from America? Yeah, it, it's going to be uh, entertaining to watch this go through. I, I saw a macro somebody posted um, earlier today that was kind of interesting. Uh, it showed uh, Rand Paul and said that he had, you know, recently performed some kind of uh, pro bono surgery. Uh, and again, I, I don't, I can't confirm any of this, but I thought it was funny. It made me laugh. Uh, it d- basically did a free surgery, right? And then above it, it showed Hillary Clinton and showed that she charged two hundred thousand dollars for a speaking engagement at a child's charity. Like fuck, man! If if Hillary's running, they're going to have a rough time if the shit ends up coming out that she's doing stuff like this. Well, yeah, but it doesn't matter. Uh, the Republicans have been shooting themselves in the foot for the last two elections. Why would they stop now? Well, you know, I think they got to get their uh, their a, their a game out there and start uh, start mocking their opponents. Might be better. Oh yeah, we need more Herman Cain's and Michelle Bachman's. Well, no, Herman Cain's retarded, and Michelle Bachman is retarded too. You've <laughs> got to have somebody that has uh, you know can tell a fucking joke and get out no. there and have a, have a little bit of banter. No, no one who can tell fucking jokes in the Republican Party, they are putting towards the front. Why? Because the Tea Party split within the Republican Party. The politicians are siding with the extremists because they're the loudest. So what do you get? Get a bunch of uptight people who can't tell a fucking joke and who think we should. Like, how are you going to handle immigration? I will build a wall. Well, yeah, because the Berlin Wall worked out so fucking well for Germany. So the Maginot Line for France. Yeah, that, that Yeah, that really slowed them down. We didn't think they would come through Sweden or Switzerland. Belgium. Was it Switzerland? Belgium? I don't know. One of them damn European countries. One of them foreigners. Imagine a line was French. Oh, yeah, but they cut through another country that was like, oh, the Germany will never cut through here because they're neutral and they wouldn't want to violate. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I thought you were asking where the, the wall was. Yeah, I brought this up on a live stream. I can't think of one fucking wall that's ever worked in history. Has there been one foolproof wall? I can't think of it. Uh, Great Wall not, didn't work against the Mongols. Yeah, you know, like what? Uh, fucking Berlin Wall sure didn't keep people from popping back and forth. Yeah, the Hadrian's DMZ zone. Wall didn't work for the Celts. Yeah, it was. Is Hadrian's Wall the one with the the guy that was fucking his horse? Am I thinking of a different one? There was a there was a uh, <laughs> he wanted to make his horse a senator, and there were rumors that he was fucking his horse. And I'm pretty sure that's Hadrian's Wall. Yeah, w- the most recent episode, uh, uh, we, we're doing, we make a whole bunch of crazy episodes aside from the regular podcast. We did Douche Canoes of History, and our most recent one was Caligula. <laughs> and one of the things, a fucking story. Yeah, and one of the things we talk about is his progress into Britain. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't him, it was his, uh, like his successors that would go on to conquer Britain, but he kind of started it. 
Yeah, and Hadrian's Wall, wasn't that a really small wall, too? It wasn't super fucking tall. It's uh, more of a suggestion than an actual wall. Yeah, it's a line. Please don't cross. The, the, depending on soccer balls. Depending on the on the era, it was anywhere from from six feet to to I think they said twelve feet, but the uh, the highest part of it was a wooden palisade. Okay. I, I mean, right now it, because it's in ruins, it's you you could step over it. Well, yeah, yeah, but it, it's just the idea of like a six foot wall. Like you could vault that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got people just hopping over it. Maybe you, if you can't tell, I keep him around because he's the one who knows everything and does all the technical work. And it is really just a good person all around. That's why I'm letting you have 5%. Big, big money. Get that Corvette in a year. Hey, 5% of nothing, still nothing. Yeah, that reminds go. me. Turn off that pesky ad block. <laughs> the amount of shit I've gotten for that fucking video. <laughs> I thought that was great. I thought that was the best use of a Boondocks clip ever. I thought I thought it worked out really well too. It was a stream bump. Like that that's what really annoyed me is my computer because it's having issues. I couldn't continue the E3 stream. But I had all these little bumps that I made, you know, like for commercial uh, not commercial breaks. I almost said commercial breaks. For when I basically got lazy and wanted to go have a cigarette or drink or whatever the fuck or go take a piss. So I had like the Monday Matt one. I had one with Adam Sessler. I couldn't even put the Adam Sessler one up on YouTube because it had Buck Cherry in it. And apparently if you if you put Buck Cherry music in a video, it will restrict it so you can't watch it in the United States. I have no idea why that is. but So I had to host a bunch on Tiny Pick and everything. But like the only two that I could really put up on YouTube were Reggie Poem and uh, the Turn That Pesky Thing Off. And the people that were popping up in the fucking uh, comment section, it's just surreal. How, how could you say that to an ally? Ally of what? It's a stream bump. What? 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 Are Monday and Matt and I fighting in a war? <laughs> like, hey, which, un- what happened to your E3 stream? Where did it go? Oh, uh, are you talking about the one on Hitbox? Because I got, or yeah, I got banned oh, off of Hitbox. The, the one on YouTube. Yeah, well, it was never meant to be like put up there. I went to YouTube because I was already banned off of Twitch for things, and then I got banned off a of Hitbox. Well, uh, yeah, but I I was watching it, and an hour and thirty minutes through, it kicks up. This video has been removed. Oh, um, the, I, I don't know who it is that's running the Internet Aristocrat Archive, but the guy apparently had somebody send him a copy, so it's up on that now. I do love that guy. He's super effective at what he does. Well, yeah, and somebody said, too, they had saved the uh, the Hitbox one where I was doing Honey Pop before, um, before E3 started, so I, I don't know if they sent that to him, too, or, or what's going on with it, but... Um, do you know how many mirror how many accounts exist on YouTube just to mirror your videos? Well, yeah, some of it's intentional. Uh, back on IA, you know, this is like pre GamerGate shit when I was just doing Tumblrisms. Really, uh, a couple of the different groups on Tumblr got really angry and were trying their hardest to get my shit pulled down. Uh, and there were a couple people that asked, "Can we just mirror shit?" And I was like, "Yeah, go ahead," because I don't care if somebody mirrors it, just as long as they're not putting ads up on it. Um, and so a lot of mirrors got put up. And ever since then, I guess it's been a thing. Because I'll delete shit at random if I feel my, my I guess my channel's cluttered up. Uh, and so people get paranoid and save shit, I guess. House, you heard it. We have to start mirroring his videos. We don't put ads on anything on our channel, so all right. Yet. <laughs> yeah, it, it never it never really bothered me. I, I, you know, I, I found it, I guess, flattering that somebody would give enough of a shit to want to save something. But um, yeah, I, I think going forward. Even if I delete something, somebody probably has a copy of it, and it'll end up on some channel. I was going to say, do you, do you not get just how big you are on the internet? I mean, uh, you're not like PewDiePie, but you have a decently sized and dedicated following. I, yeah, I don't necessarily know if that's... I, I don't. I, how do I put this? I think people find the videos interesting because of the subject. I don't think it's a following of me. I think it's just they, they, like, like, they like hearing about how crazy Tumblr is. Or they like hearing about crazy people like Nick Bates. That's that's kind of how Jim I look Senpai. at it. What's that? I follow you, Jim Senpai. Yeah, it, it's I don't know. It's always been weird to think of the idea that somebody likes my shit. It's easier to think of them as hating it. <laughs> he says to the two rabid fans who begged him to come on their their shitty podcast. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think in the original message I sent you, I included the line, "Please love us." Well, yeah, and this goes back to what I was saying earlier, or when I was talking to you, 
I, I don't mind talking to people. It's just, it's weird. I guess people have this idea that I won't if they invite me on somewhere. Like I had a couple of people on Twitter hit me up and say, w- would you ever do this? Yeah, I, I, I don't mind. It's not, I'm not going to tell you to go fuck yourself. You're intellectually intimidating. I'm really not. I'm not that fucking smart. Honestly, what I think it is is that you have a, a large channel following and most people when they get to a certain size just say, you know what, I don't care anymore. I'm not going to deal with this crap. Well, I, I've tried my best to keep that following minimal <laughs> by torpedoing channels. You have I, failed. I, I've done my damnedest to keep it small. Yeah, I was trying to explain that to a friend of mine the other day. She's like, why does he have so many screen names? Well, every so often he just destroys the channel, takes a break, and comes back at somebody else. Yeah, why? Usually, usually that works. Um, this time it didn't really. Because uh, Mr. Turn That Pesky Thing Off decided to put a fucking video up announcing it. He wasn't the only one. Oh, no, I saw I saw a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, he was on that like flies on shit. He has a man crush on you. I don't know. I think he's I think he's angry at me now because of the the video. What is it they have in, in those manga sundere? Is it called? Yes. Yeah. Is, is that is that what you're thinking it is? Yeah, he's sundere for you. Like it's not that I want to make a video about you or anything. I just uh, when it comes to Monday Matt, I just find it fun to poke fun at him for stupid shit. And those co- he's made some comments. That are just, it's hard not to hear them and want to laugh. Like the, uh, you know, the whole nickname walking on water, right? The, uh, I've, a hero's been a title that's been laid at my feet. Who says shit like that? I'm one of the most red pilled motherfuckers on the internet. <laughs> you know, he didn't actually say that, but it, it sounds like he did, doesn't it? He was talking about King of Pole. He goes, <laughs> King, King of Pole is one of the most red pilled motherfuckers on the internet. But I, I spliced that, so it sounds like he's saying it. It's great. Do you ever watch the Drunken Peasants podcast? Yeah, for I have a lot of people bring that podcast up to me. Uh, yeah, I've listened to a couple episodes, especially after people have been liking it a lot. Well, there are fans that have a uh, chat room based up for for them, and I go on it sometimes because I, I am a tremendous fame horn. Would love to talk to more internet celebrities, and I swear to God, I saw somebody in that chat room who had King of Pole as their username. I'm not saying it was him. I'm just saying you never know. Well, it, it, my my whole stance on uh, – yeah, that's a, another thing too. I have a lot of people bring up the term e-celeb. I've seen that bantied about a lot. What's the definition of that? Is there a is there a threshold? Is there an amount that you have to, I guess, in views or subscribers or age of a channel or content produced? What is the threshold to be an e-celeb? Well, I like to think of it this way. Um I know you're you're not after fame, you're not after money, you're doing this because it's something you enjoy. You're doing this because you, you there are some people in this world you want everybody else to look at and go, wow, that dude's fucking crazy. But um, I, I consider you an e-celeb because you could open up a Patreon right now, do one video about it, and get over $1,000. I guarantee it. Uh, you know, I, I honestly think if I were to open a Patreon tomorrow, uh, I'd probably get maybe, maybe if I'm lucky, uh, like buck fifty, dollar twenty five, dollar thirty, enough to maybe go get a burger at McDonald's. You have no idea. No, that, that, that's a, that's how I look at it. Mo would give you more than that. I really oh, would. I could supersize, <laughs> could I? Yeah. yeah. Is that what no, those yeah. kids are calling it nowadays? Yeah, it just uh, you know I, I've talked about this on Ask FM too. It, you know, it, part of it is I don't like the idea of a large fan base. Part of it is it's easier to be disliked than it is liked. And I guess another component of that is it, it, it's just it, it's weird. You know, I have I've had people bring up on Ask and different avenues like, oh, can I send you something? Can I? I've had people say, I want to give you money or I want to give you games or uh, that kind of shit. And my my typical response to that is, go fucking spend it on yourself, man. Yeah, well, you accepted hatred. Yeah, I did. I, I really wanted to play hatred, but the guy was like, <laughs> I'll give you I'll give you the game if you do a review. So he's like, okay, that's a fair trade. Most of the time, what ends up happening is if I accept a game, I feel obligated to return, uh, you know, to send a gift back. Uh, for the most part, I've really stayed consistent with that. I owe one guy a game right now. Um, so I'm kind of shopping his wish list. He sent me a copy of uh, The Witcher 3, and I told him I'd get him something in return. But I just, I feel weird taking shit from people. I, I can't really explain it. That makes me think of something about video games that's been pissing me off lately. And I know it's something a lot of people have complained about. 
what the hell is a digital special edition? Uh, How the hell can you have a digital special edition? Well, yeah, that's where you're you're paying for the. It's almost like a name brand at this point. You're paying for the the perk of the name. It's like saying, um, you know, what what's the difference between this brand and this brand? Oh, it's the name. That's that's why you're paying a dollar fifty extra. That's why you're paying two bucks extra. Digital special editions, just that version and the video game. It's <laughs> it's brilliant marketing. You're going to get people who are going to spend money to get access to shit they should probably get access to in the first place. God, I remember. 2005, 2006, people going, oh, no, no, digital distribution, when it becomes a thing, it's going to drastically lower video game prices across the board because they won't have to pay for discs or anything. Then the video game companies went, did you realize we could just charge the same price and these assholes will pay it? It's beautiful. Yeah, essentially, you know, can we bilk them for the most amount of money possible? But, you know, we're like, fuck, I lost my train of thought. Um, oh, yeah, with the e-slip thing. So do you think that's what it is? It's the money barrier? Well, that's what I consider it, but then again, I've been told I'm a shallow person. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, yeah, it's just I see that term a lot, and I, I've had people bring up uh, others they consider to be e-celebs. But I can't really think of, I, I guess, what the fucking definition is, what the definitive definition is of what constitute uh, constitutes an e-celeb. Well, you're bigger than Spoonie. Oh, fuck Spoonie. That guy. <laughs> that guy. $5,000 a month to make a movie. Where's the movie? And then his Patreon's going down. There's a fucking thread on Kyle that's hysterical. They've been tracking his Patreon for two months now, and they keep updating it every time it starts to drop in money amount. Uh, and just just reading through that is funny because he he's gone from yeah I believe it was five thousand something to thirty seven hundred now. So I think even his fan base is just getting annoyed with it at this point. Well, hell, have you heard of that? Uh, what the fuck's his name? Josh Fierstein? Uh, no, I'm not familiar with that one. I don't think. Crazy Christian got like a million followers on Facebook, raised twenty seven thousand dollars to start up a production studio to increase the he was gonna buy this really expensive webcam and and make professional quality videos for all of his legions of followers where he says things like, um, the United States is going to collapse within the next two years because they don't follow Christian values. You know, logical stuff. And he raises $27,000, and he's still taking shitty videos with his iPhone. Where, where is... I didn't know that your um, $5,000 camera that you were purchasing had a portrait mode that was that bad. You know, and, and the thing, too, is I guess people get this idea with me that um, I hate anyone that makes money online. I, I really don't. Um, you look at somebody like Thunderfoot. He makes a ton of money on Patreon. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. Or Critical. Uh, he's got a Patreon now doesn't bother me one bit there are what is it uh, your movie sucks gets a, a good chunk doing his stuff there are people and I, and I the weird thing is i found that the majority of them that have i guess patreons or ads are making the same kind of content after that that they did before it and their patreon or the money they're making was never used to impact the quality of the the content they're putting out it's the ones that always say oh well you know god if, if you do my patreon or you do my uh well, fuck, whatever thing, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, doesn't matter. The quality is suddenly going to rise, but it, it rarely ever does. I mean, fuck, look at it. Uh, Anita Sarkeesian. She got all this money. Where the fuck are the videos? Yeah, it's, it's been, been what? how many years? It's been two fucking years. She was going to ship those DVDs out. Three. Yeah, she was going to ship those DVDs out in the, what, December of 2012? Where the fuck are they? I still want to know what a fighting fuck toy is. But it's just, it, it's, it's surreal. Yeah. So you get people like that. So I can imagine this guy raising 27 grand and he's still doing the same shit. Uh, where did the money go? What is he using it on? Who knows? Uh, you know, on well, the one from hand, the looks of him baked goods. Yeah. On the one hand, you got, I, I don't know. It, it's a really fine line. It's, it's a nuanced line, at least in, in my opinion, on what, what constitutes uh, a, a good bet to put your money towards and what doesn't. There's some people that I, I guess really like the shit they listen to or watch and they want to give money. Fine. But. I just wish people were more careful because you're going to get hustled if you're not careful. You heard him, House. Next episode, we're starting a Patreon. Put Jim approved on it. <laughs> if you got your fan base and your fan base wants to give you money, uh, more power to you. But Yeah, because that guy in Pakistan, he's got so much spare change. He, you never know. He might be a, he might be a billionaire. Going to get a goat. Going to pay these Americans $10,000 a month to make video. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> A la whatever. We're making video. You know, speaking of the, the Drunken Peasants podcast, isn't, uh, he's getting like 7,700 a month, I think, for that? No, they're over 8,000. 
Yeah, yeah, it's just a you know a huge amount of money. But I've never I've never heard anybody complain. Yeah, again, that goes oh. back to the, there are certain people that make a lot of money uh, through PayPal's and Patreons and all this shit, and you don't really hear complaints about it. Nobody's I've never heard anybody say, "Oh, those fuckers at the Drunken Peasants, uh, they never put their podcasts out," or "Your movie sucks, never puts his content out," or uh, "Thunderfoot's quality's gone down." You know, like they they seem to always be consistent. Is another thing well, where people the, feel the it's amazing a good bet. atheist, for example. Uh, now, I, again, don't believe or, or I don't agree with everything he says, but I agree with a lot of what he says because he's a big, angry asshole and that appeals to me. So, But he does his Amazing Atheist videos, the Drunken Peasants videos, their video game channel, Rage Feed, uh, his TJ Does Life videos. It's just insane. He's got four different channels. He's constantly uploading. They took a month-long vacation to Europe, and this guy's still uploading videos from, like, British museums and such. Now, how crazy is it when you think about that? When you look at the amount of content he's putting out, and you said all in all they're making what around seventy or seventy-seven to eight thousand or yeah, about eight grand. And yet, somebody like Jim Sterling's making ten thousand, and he puts out one or two videos. Oh, he had a big following on the Escapist. Well, it's just it's the difference. I I just I, I don't know. I don't know how people on the internet come up with the valuations they do for the content. That that always floors me. It's always been something I wanted to look at, but I don't even know how to tackle it. I'm just glad that Movie Bob's Patreon's going down. But yeah, God, he was sitting at a stupid amount of money too. It was like forty four hundred bucks, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, something like that. But I, I don't. Last time I checked, it had gone down. I think it was around three grand. I can't I can't swear to it though. You know the the one group that's making the most amount of money off this is Patreon because don't they take like a five percent cut? I think. Oh, they must be rolling in it at this point because that that's become web fair for everybody. Like everybody's that, using that site now. That is just a genius business plan. It, I mean, you have to give them credit. It is a brilliant idea for how to set up, uh, um, you know, I guess a money gifting system on the internet. He's he's making a lot of fucking money doing it. But I, I I'm just I've always had concerns about their security. Because from what I understand, when you sign up for a Patreon, you have to enter a uh, social security number or a tax ID number, so your SSN or your TIN number. Uh, I don't know how secure the site is, and I don't know. I, I just I get this feeling that maybe a year or two years from now, we're going to hear about Patreon getting hacked into and everybody's financial information getting uh, taken, and it's going to be a fucking shitstorm. It helps when you have no credit rating, because I've had people steal my identity like three times, and they never get anywhere with it. Well, yeah, the crazy thing is, I mean, you're going to have all the, the people with Patreon pages have their, like, SSNs taken and their TIN numbers taken, but then you're going to have everybody who donates get fucked, too. So it, it just, it, it that's my speculation. I really do believe in a year or two years, Patreon's going to get hacked, and it is going to be a fucking massive shit show when it goes down. Well, that's one of the benefits of living in a society where we believe in credit. What happened to real money? I have real money. I have a dish right here that's full of change. Hey, there you go. Jingle jangle. It's real. I, 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 well, I get digital currency. I have no problems with digital currency. But the concept of credit, like, you don't have any money, but we believe you could pay us back in the future, makes my brain hurt. Credit's really just betting in the end. Hey, you know, it, it's how, how they're betting on whether or not you can pay. And in the short term, they're making money off interest. Oh, yeah, but my economics professor used to get pissed off at me when I would tell him that things like insurance is betting, except you're betting against yourself. Oh, yeah, I'm sure he loved that. It's like, no, 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 it's not betting, it's economics. Like, No, it's gambling. You are gambling against your own health and safety. Okay, Jim, uh, we've taken up enough of your time. Uh, thanks for joining us. Oh, uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure. Hey, I could talk for another three hours. Why are you throwing me out of here? I could listen to you for another <laughs> three hours. This is all House's fault. Yeah, what the it's fuck, terrible. Else? Shameful. Well, you see, here's the thing, Mo. I'm trying to get him to like us, so if we ever want to do this again, he'll come back. Oh, if you guys want to have me on again, I'd, I'd be uh, more than willing to. It's been fun. Glorious fucking huzzah. We need to get you on with Alex the Happy Hippie. The, he does some. Of, uh, he comes on with us for our movie reviews sometimes. I think you and him would get along like two fat kids fighting over a Twinkie. <laughs> well, I do love Twinkies. <laughs> Anyway, we'll go ahead and give him the contact information and let Jim get out of here. 
If you have a douche crew you'd like us to take a look at or a douche crew of history you'd like us to crack on in the podcast, you can send us the information directly at douchecanoestudio at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Facebook at Douche Studio and Twitter on at HM. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Douche Canoe Studio, as well. If you'd like to send us an anonymous question, you can at ask.fm under Douche Canoe Studio. If you'd like to download any episodes of Having the Douche Canoe or Deep Watching for free onto your iPhone, Android, iPad, tablet, or listening device, they can be downloaded and enjoy it for free at SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iTunes. So, for this very special episode of Paddling the Douche Canoe, I'm House. I'm Mo. I'm Jim. Paddle on. <laughs>